impossible. I'll be on time every one of these every week. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our pre-match press conference to preview this weekend's game against Brighton and Hove Albion. We'll start with questions from Vinny at Sky Sports News. Sure, we know there's plenty still to be sorted out around the club. But at the same time, it feels like there's a positive, a more positive atmosphere about the place. How does it feel to you? You get the sense of, um, I think, after last season, the challenges, it, it, a positive finish to the, the, the season and uh, a more positive feel, a bit, a bit more calmness, I suppose. Not just positivity, but a bit more calmness, maybe a bit more reality of the, the, the truth of what the situation is. Um, it takes a dampening down of you know such a passionate fan base at times just to you know speak the truth and let them align with that. And I think there's a mixture of circumstances, but I do agree. I think you know generally being up and around the people here in my pre-season games, we tried to keep them local so lots of fans could join in. And I think there is a, a better, certainly a better feel and a more positive feel generally speaking. Has recruitment helped that as well? Because the fans' view is that in terms of the recruitment, it's worked to a better model than we've seen over a number of years at the football. Field. Well, I mean, some of it has been a have-to situation. Um, I've tried to be open with that in my time here so far, and um, you know, trying to get players in who, who do fit the club, of course, and can grow into the club. Um, and I think we've we've worked hard collectively, but particularly Kevin, the, the team of scouts, to try and line the right players. Um, you know, they're, they're the only sort of uh, balance to that is that the players we've brought in haven't got much Premier League experience, and it's a very tough uh, league, as you know. Um, so it's how quickly they can affect the, the group, but also affect it not just pre-season, of course, when you go into the real stuff. And that's yet to be seen. But I think we've adapted the best we can to the challenge of the football club financially. How ready do you feel they are though, to impact the Premier League? Yeah, we'll see. There's never a, a pure guarantee, but the way they've gone in pre-season, the way we've looked at them, the way they've um, conducted themselves through the fitness programme and worked hard to get to where it needs to be, then I've been pleased with that. The fact, though... That off the pitch, another takeover has fallen through. How is the ownership situation beginning to impact you now? No, I, I don't think. I think we've tried to see through all of that. You know, since I've been here, it's difficult at times, especially when I first got here, because it was a constant. Um, well, it has been a constant theme, more or less. And you know, I think we've tried to stay focused on the real job from our point of view, which is to get the, the pitch right. You know, um, we can't do everything, and we certainly can't affect the business model of the club in that respect of someone buying it. So. We'll just have to wait and see. Have you be given any guidance as to how, when a resolution could be found? Nope. Just uh, fingers crossed that it gets found. <laughs> well, does that create uncertainty for you, though? No, not, not so. Well, it's been here ever since I got here. So, you know, it hasn't really changed. The narrative, that side of it, hasn't changed much. It just goes higher volume, as you know, or lower volume, you know, depending usually on results and, and the bigger picture of the club. Um, you know, I mean, it's one of the... I can't control... You know, I always believe in controlling the controllables, and that's not one. You know, I can't decide whether the club gets sold or who buys it. Um, so we're just going to wait and you know wait for that period when it happens, or if it doesn't happen, then keep working hard. I just wonder as well whether it impacts a, a player like Dominic Calvert-Lewin. We know he's into the final year of his contract as well. Are attempts still being made to get him to commit beyond next summer, or do you just have to? Part yeah, we, we've spoken openly, or I certainly have about you know constantly trying to be open with the players. Um, Kev more so than me with their advisors often and, and agents. Um, and we still try and do that. So, you know, Dom's in the picture. He's worked, he's worked very hard in pre-season. Um, I think he's looked sharp in pre-season. So we just want him to take that onto the pitch. Just if a decent offer came in for him, though, obviously it makes business sense to, to let him no, go. But that, that would be a contingency. Plan. Well, that would, that would be the, the challenge for the club to decide what, what level any player, not just Dom. You know, you saw with Amadou leaving us, you know, there was a level where they think, right, that's it. It's got to be done. Um, and that's the current situation at the club. So it's not just about the players mentioned, it's about any player. Does that mean, though, that you're confident that the group of players, the first team group that you have now, you will still have here at Christmas? No, not necessarily. It means that I'm confident that the, the club are going to do the best they can to make sure we're competitive. But equally, the club's got an outside picture, which is quite obvious. And that's not something that I can control. They, they, you know, they do need to balance the finances better. We've done a lot of work with that since I've been here. Um, and Kev obviously included in that on the playing side of things, to bring money in and lower the wage bill. And we've done a, a pretty fair job, I would say, of that. Um, but the bigger picture of the club is dependent on what money is needed at any given time. Goodison's last season, does that bring added pressure or is it purely a privilege? Yeah, it doesn't bring pressure to me because it, it, the pressure is constant here um, since I've been here. You know, it's just the way it is. So I think the it brings a... I think there'll be a, a good feeling about the place because... You know, I don't, I've only been here sort of, what, 18, 19 months. You know, I don't know the depth of 
families who've had season tickets for years and years and years and you know the stories and you yourself I know you know if you've been with your kids and stuff like that and grandkids and all them kind of stories that are this history and they, they sort of build in this the feel of a football club so I'm too new to know about that but I've learned pretty quickly what it means to people but equally the demand for a new stadium and I think everyone appreciates that so yes the the uh, the old will will go and the new will come in but I think most people deep down as much as they love Goodison for all their memories will say it's about time it's needed so I think it's a, a step forward thanks Sean <coughs> thank you <coughs> excuse me family productions back please Hi, Sean. Oh, boiling. <laughs> Can they, do they ever get the temperature right in there? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I always think people must watch and go, God, he looks nervous. He's sweating. They don't realise how hot it is, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Uh, first Premier League game, obviously, of this season at the weekend for your first ever Premier League game for the man in the opposition, dugouts, Hertzler. Um, you have so much experience managing at the level. He's just starting out at 31 years old. What advice or what would you tell him to expect from this league? I wouldn't tell him anything before we play him. <laughs> um, no, it, it's, a, it's a challenging league. Um, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, from a lot of foreign managers that have come into the league, who I, I've got to know over the years, have all said that, you know, the first thing that hits them is the, the uh, different demand of the league. And, and everyone challenged, you know, in, in this division. It's not just the... The, the sort of superpower clubs currently, it's everyone is a challenge. You know, there's no easy ride in the Premier League. So I think that one seems to be the feedback I've had for many managers down the years. Um, I mean, he'll learn, I'm sure. He's obviously got to where he's got to for, for a good reason, you know, at a young age. So he's obviously highly, highly um, thought of. Um, but yeah, it'll be every day's a learning curve anyway in football and any walk of life, but particularly in football and particularly in the Premier League. So see how he fares. But like I say, I'll not be telling too much until uh, we play him. You couldn't separate the two sides uh, across your two games last season. What do you expect to see from Brighton under their new management? Well, I'm, I'm sure he's trying to bring his his version of what he wants to do. Um, it still looks to me like they're, they're passing, playing, um, maybe pressing a bit quicker, uh, maybe a bit a bit quicker tempo to their passing and playing. But he's just looking to get his variation of football and, and one that he'll know deep down that you know you've got to win, you've got to or you've got to win enough um, to make sure that people take strength in what you do. Starting off where you finished, obviously, so well at the end of last season, how easy has it been to keep that positive momentum going through? through yeah, I mean, it's different because you, you have a close season period and then players come back in, you know, fitness challenges. We had a few injuries, which have been unfortunate, still have um, from the last season and going through this pre season. Um, but I think, the, the as we spoke about, the, the new signings have adjusted that feel as well. Um, and different kind of signings, different kind of players, which we thought was important for that um, diversity of the team and how we want to play. Um, so, yeah, I think there's a, a newness to it, which does bring a different feeling. But we can't rely on last season, although it was a very strong finish. We have to build into the new season, which we'll be looking to do. And speaking of those fitness um, issues, have you got an update on Jared Branthwaite <coughs> and where he is? Yeah, they're a little bit behind us, Seamus as well. Um, Jimmy Garner was unfortunate, not too serious, but should be joining pretty soon. Pat was making good progress. Um, missing one, there's another one in there somewhere. But Yeah, so they're, they're making good progress, but they're not yet there yet. Thank you, Alan. We'll go to Julia. BBC Radio <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you ended last season five wins at Goodison in a row and didn't concede in those five games either. I'm just thinking as well with the emotion, as you've said, at Goodison. I know the 1878s have got a lot of plans as well. Do you see home form being a key or are you just slightly worried there could be some distractions with you know the Goodison feeling around? Well, I don't, I don't think there'll be distractions. Um, you, want, you want your home form to be strong. But, you know, I think we've spoken about it before. When I got here, everyone said their way form needs changing. So we did change that. And then they said their home form needs changing. You go, well, you know, that's the challenge. It's hard to change both every season. If we'd all did that, we'd all be mega successful. But I think it's fair to say, and you, with your home crowd and your home support, you want to give them good value in what the team does. And, of course, that always starts with winning. If you can win in the right way and in a way that is um, even more pleasing for the fans, then that's even better. Um, but we definitely want it to be the fortress that it is, certainly by voice. We haven't always made it through results. We did at the end of last season, but certainly with the voice of the, the, the fans and the way they back the team and the club. So we definitely want that feeling and we've got to reward that. Dominic got seven Premier League goals last season, Beto three. I know you'll want those numbers higher. Is there anything you've done this summer to try and change things or, or work on getting those numbers higher? I think the, the players have worked hard and I think they've played their part in that. I think the, the basic fitness levels keeping Dom out there for a long period of pre-season. 
you know, people wouldn't always know, but he's not had true pre-seasons for a long time, whereas this one he has, that being fit and all the way through and doing all the work. So we hope that pays him back and us back. Uh, Beto's new to it from last season, come back fit this pre-season and needs to understand that that's part of the game, which I'm sure he's learned from last season and was fed back to him. Deli Ali's been training with you. Does he have a future at Everton and, and does he have to prove something to you? We'll see. I mean, for, for me, it's always just speaking about him get, uh, getting fit. You know, that's the first thing, getting truly fit. He's in and around it. Um, so we'll wait and say, oh, that was the one Yusuf. So he, he had a minor operation, but that's going to be weeks rather than days. Um, but he's in good shape. I know I'd forgotten one. Um, there's so many of them. Um, given that it's been a calmer, as you've said, a calmer summer, a calmer feeling around the club right now, do you feel as a manager you've maybe learned something from the last 12 months and everything that happened that you couldn't have predicted? Do you feel you're going into this as a different manager with a new skill set? <sighs> I think, yeah, you just learn that never think it's tr truly calm. There's there's always another wave or a storm coming around the corner. That's what it seems like. It's not literal. And I don't always see, you know, people sort of have this imaginary view that I see everything, you know, and I, I, I see everything before it happens. I don't, you know, that often the, the, the big stuff is, is way above me. I sometimes get a late shout on it, but not, you know, not like weeks in advance. So I think you just got to be ready at this club. You've got to be ready for what comes next. You know, and I've tried to be as adapt adaptable and flexible as I can with each challenge that's come our way, not just me, but the whole group and the, the club. Um, Try to stay connected. I think that's the key through all the challenges. Thank you, Julia. We'll go to Shimuna, BBC Online next. <sighs> Did it take him by surprise, do you think, that it was going to be hard? Oh, no. I expected this. Been there, been there 19 months. Do you need a towel? <laughs> no, I'm all right. Um, Cold shower, that's what I mean. The years of experience that you've had playing and managing, is there still that excitement at the start of a new season? Um, yeah, I think there is. I think the, what you learn about pre-season over the years and the more experience you get is they're not always how you imagine them to when the real stuff starts. You know, good pre-season, awkward pre-season, indifferent, all the rest of it is when the real whistle blows. You often, you know, that's when it comes together and that's the challenge. So, you know, I've, I've learned enough to not think of it either way than other than be open-minded. So... We'll see how we go, but we, well, I think we've had a good pre-season and, and in the sense of moulding the players as quickly as possible and the new players into the group. Um, we'll see how effective that is. Some mixed results in pre-season. Are the group where you feel you want them to be at this time? Yeah, I mean, obviously they're not with the injuries. Um, you know, we were hoping that everyone would be... Um, there was a couple who we thought Pato was a bit longer term, but certainly the others we thought would be um, fit for the scene, they're not. So that's unfortunate. But the rest of the group, yes, I think fitness is good. And I think the, the level of performance, the level of detail through the pre-season has been good. On the Brighton manager, <coughs> um, were you surprised they went for someone so inexperienced? Uh, is it a brave move from them? No, I mean, I, I think that, you know, football's changing all the time, you know, and, and viewpoints are changing all the time. And certainly, um, I don't know whether this is factually right, but in the, the um, German leagues, it seems there's a lot more younger managers around. I'm not sure that's an absolute fact, but it seems they're certainly promoting younger coaches to be managers. I think that's changed as well, that tag of head coach rather than manager. A lot of clubs now across Europe that I know, not all, but are having that idea where it's a coach and not a manager. They've got other people who manage things and then they want a coach. So that's changed the model maybe and the, the, the viewpoint of you know how it was always like a manager would oversee not literally everything but lots of things. Coach maybe just oversees the team. So I think that's changing the view as well of, of football and, and various um, football clubs and how they view it. So, But you've still, got to, you've still got to earn the right. You've still got to be good enough and he's obviously shown that he's good enough to get the challenge of, of being in the Premier League. Do you think that's something English football can learn from then giving younger managers an opportunity? Um, I don't think it's about learning from anyone else. I think it's about just any requirements that an owner usually wants, an owner or their team around them, the, the football director, the chief exec. Um, you know, all different clubs have different models and ways of working. So I don't think it's learning from anyone in particular. I think it's just whoever's the ownership at that time will have their belief in the right thing for a company, like any company. It's not just football industry. You know, I do little bits with other companies and it's not just about age, it's about quality. It's about the way that you can take any situation forwards. And I think some football clubs are, are open to younger managers, some are not, some want experience and, and also tailoring it to the job in hand. And, and Brighton obviously feel they've got a person they want in, in place for the, the job in hand that they've got and the model they want to work to. Yeah, It looks like um, Calvin Phillips is off to Ipswich. It's, uh, he's a player that the club looked at. Can you see him? Did we? Yeah. It's funny that there's another one we've looked at, including them £40 million out of forwards. I don't know where that keeps coming from, like, I wish. Yeah. Are you able to see why it didn't happen or 
Well, no, there's no reason to because he's not my player. And are you still looking to do more business with the with England? I, I think it's unlikely. Um, mm. You know, I, I'm aware of the financial situation, so I, I think it's unlikely. But you never know. Sometimes things uh, change quickly, so we'll have to wait and see. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shimmy. We'll go to Cal at the Press Association next. Hi, Sean. Uh, Michael Keane was probably the other one on the list. Oh, um, yes. Short term, so he's trained this week. OK, so potential for Saturday. Yeah, well, he's trained fine today, no reaction, hopefully. So, yeah, he'd certainly be in the thinking um, of the group who are fit. Uh, yeah, he was the one. I'm sorry about that. OK, thank you. Um, I'll not use the word targets, but what, what are your expectations for the season? Well, I think because of the, the bigger picture of the club, I think it's year on year, that certainly under my watch, is to move forward, you know, and be better than the previous season. And, of course, there's a, a strange view, which people often talk about, rightly so, because of the adjustment of the points last season. But the points, the, the performances, the growth in the team and the development of, of individuals, because that's important now, you know, for the club. It's, it's, it was once a, quite clearly a buying club, and now it's not. So, therefore, it's development and winning and bringing it all together in a, in a package that can suit the club and, and be successful, which is a hard task, of course. So... From my point of view as management, looking at the players individually and their development and, and how the team's developing, from the club's point of view, managing the finances the best possible. And from the fans' point of view, getting as many points on the table and going up the table. So, you know, as, as you know, that's easy. That's what we do. Thank you, Carl. Go to Will next. Will just Wigan. check on where Nathan Patterson is. Sean Sanders, agree up, please. Yeah, he's just coming back into the, the group to train, but obviously he's had an extended period out. So there's no expectation of him playing yet, but he's literally just crossing over to train with the group generally. The first team group, that is. You said after the press game would like some more experience in. Um, obviously, that will depend on the finances, but Amadou leaving, Andre Gomez leaving, only Tim coming in. Do you feel like you're a little bit light in the field? Maybe? Well, we've been light since I got here because we had to you know, shift players. We had to move them on for the, the, the financial side. So I still think we're a little bit stretched as soon as we get three or four injuries. Um, but that's the way it goes. That's the nature of the current situation. We want players to be flexible. We do feel we've got players who can play in other situations, other, excuse me, other positions on the pitch. So I think we have got some flexibility. But we have got a limited number of bodies. So you know, if we can affect things, we will do. If we can't, we can't. Mason Holgate and Neil Moore play back from loan. Do you see a future at the club for them this season? We'll see. We'll see. You know, it's, it's at the moment it's really about playing. You know, who's playing, who's playing well, who's training well. Um, so them decisions are made before the end of the window. They might be, they might not be. Just finally, have you spoken so far, haven't you, at all, given the situation with the takeover? Or? Yeah, no, nothing, nothing of any depth. Just, you know, messages and stuff like that. I'll probably see him soon or speak to him soon, but there's been nothing too much to report to him or me, to, uh, sorry, him to me or me to him, really. Just a few messages like he, that's, that's what he does. That's standard for my time there, so I've got no problem with that. Thank you. Will. Any more questions in the open section? Okay, great. We'll go on to the newspapers next week. Can't turn them off.